north branch of the Saskatchewan River, just 300 miles from Canada's southern border, lies Edmonton, Alberta, the nation's most northerly major city. Edmonton has long been known as the gateway to the north, terminal point for the lines of supply and communication with Canada's vast northern territories. freight yards, summer and winter, stores and equipment begin the long journey northward to the district of Mackenzie. North from Edmonton, the railroad winds through 250 miles of farmland and open country to waterways, the old end of the line. Waterways, Alberta. For years, the northern terminus of this railroad to the north lies halfway between Edmonton and the southern border of the territories. 250 miles beyond waterways is the district of Mackenzie in the Northwest Territories. Stretching over half a million square miles of Arctic and subarctic land, it is potentially one of the richest oil and mineral areas in the world. Through a fertile subarctic valley flows the Mackenzie River one of the world's great rivers, and one of the few which empty into the Arctic Ocean. It drains the waters of Great Slave Lake and Great Bear Lake, down through the maze of the Mackenzie Delta into the Beaufort Sea. Explorers, fur traders, and prospectors traveled north on this great waterway. They traveled downriver to the Arctic. They traveled down north. First went north to work for the Bay Boys, went down there to make my stake. Stayed ten years in Arctic Red River, and every winter I'd shiver and shake, and every winter I'd shiver and shake. When we talk about our district, we usually say in. We look on the rest of Canada as being outside. I guess we owe that attitude pretty much to our climate. You see, not long ago, for about eight months in every year, between freeze up and break up, just about everybody who was in stayed in, and most everybody who wasn't stayed out. Nowadays you can fly just about anywhere if there's enough daylight. But you can't ship an awful lot by airplane unless you're a millionaire. Most of our supplies have been carried downriver in the summertime by barge and diesel tug. But they can't move in winter. We've tried new ways as they've come along. We pushed winter roads over the ice and snow and they worked okay. Of course, they had to be rebuilt every year since breakup always washed them out. We've been making good use of tractor trains for a long time. They make their own roads as they go along. But where there are pressure ridges, there are bound to be holes. They make this operation tricky and dangerous. Snowmobiles provide all the transport these fishermen need in winter. They fish for great slave whitefish, using boats in the summertime, and when the ice covers in winter, out come the snowmobiles. men 
chip through the ice and drop their nets in. When they haul them up, there's another load of whitefish, just about as fresh frozen as you can get it. And they don't seem to worry too much about the legendary cold that's supposed to make life so tough in the north. Like a hungry sled dog, ten below is a tropical day. Keep the teapot hot on the stove, boys. Winter won't last any longer than May. Winter won't last any longer than May. These fishermen work out of Hay River on the southwest shore of the Great Slave. In a sense, Hay River is the south. It's in the southern part of the district, all right. But more than that, it has the Mackenzie Highway to Grimshaw, Alberta, 350 miles to the south, and rail transport summer and winter. Right in the middle of absolutely nowhere, you can come across a gold mine, like Discovery here on the north shore of Great Slave Lake. 10, 20, or 30 below zero, these young fellows ride down into the rock of the Precambrian Shield. Their job is to drill and blast and haul the rock up to the surface. And they manage to do it without worrying too much about the weather outside. When they get that rock up top, they've got every single bit of machinery they need to crush it and process it. Finally, it's gold. Gold miners don't worry about transportation as much as other miners do, because even on an airplane, a gold brick is worth its weight in gold. They do get pretty irritated, though, at the cost of bringing in a whole year's supply in our short summer. It means they have to store large inventories, much of it in heated warehouses. And the cost of heating by oil for seven months of the year comes high. Around Great Bear, we did some searching, looking for gold and nothing more. Paid no mind to a rock called Pitch Blend, and it turned out to be uranium ore, and it turned out to be uranium ore. Up on Great Bear Lake, Port Radium is the site of a mine we are pretty proud of. Miners like these dug a mineral called Pitch Blend out of here in the 30s and cut the cost of radium on the world market by over half. Later on, it's all produced uranium, basic fuel for a new atomic age. Now, Port Radium isn't the only uranium mine we got, but it was the first. Of course, transportation is a problem here too. But uranium concentrate, like gold, is worth the extra cost of airplanes. Well, we're fur trappers mostly and pretty well tied to the old ways. There doesn't seem to be much future for the fur trade. But then I guess it's pretty hard to quit something that your people have been doing for generations. Out on the trap line, a man can hold on to yesterday. The trap line is his. A license says so. What if the day is cold? If the wind does not blow, the traps can be found. How many muskrats make a coat? How many prime skins? 75, 80 skins, maybe. 
How many trips on the trap line make one fur coat? 80 traps, if they all have one. Make one fur coat, maybe. How much did the market pay last year? 60 cents a skin, was it? The year before? 80 cents, wasn't it? How many skins does a man need to hold on to yesterday? The delta of the mighty Mackenzie, formed by mud and silt carried down river for centuries. This is muskrat country, and many a lady's fur coat started out right here on the Mackenzie Delta. Clean the pelt now as your father taught you. You know the proper way. You know more men want to trap now than in your father's time. You know the price is low. Maybe the price will be better this year. So clean the pelt as your father taught you and hope. Now the sun came out for only a minute. Four long months and the days were black. Traded first till the warehouse bulge, boys. Spring came in and the sun was back. Spring came in and the sun was back. This is a Clavic, trading center for Mackenzie Delta trappers. Here the Indian who seldom goes north of the tree line and the Eskimo who never goes below it find a common meeting ground on the edge of the Arctic. The white man thinks of the Eskimo as hard-working, good-humored, happy. But this is the normal way among us. The white man's bad temper is the way of children among my people. We work hard, for we must to live in our land. For eight long months, winter has locked each group, each settlement, in relative isolation. But now, as the day lengthens and the sun climbs higher, something happens to the land. Now nothing moves. No snow for sleds, too much ice for boats. Even the workhorse bush plane must wait. This is breakup. waterways Alberta, through the long winter, through spring and breakup, great mountains of stores and equipment have piled high in the yards and on the wharves and in the warehouses. Here we get them sorted out and ready to start on the first leg of their long journey down north. As soon as the water is clear, we start to move. Let's go! and supplies are funneled from the swift rail transport to barges, 
a system of water transport which begins here and ends 1,300 miles away on the shores of the Arctic Ocean. We put in some pretty long hours loading these barge transports. We have to, to take advantage of the long daylight hours of the very short summer season. Once the loading is completed, the barges never stop from one point to another. We push them down the river from waterways, across Lake Athabasca, and then down the Slave. Well, that's only the first part of the journey, and we're still in Alberta. Eighteen miles of rapids straddling the border of the territories have blocked all water traffic since the earliest days of the district. At Fort Fitzgerald, we take everything off and portage it around the rapids past Fort Smith to Bell Rock. In the old days, manpower unloaded small wooden York boats, and Red River carts and oxen hauled our goods over the 15 miles to Bell Rock. And down the river the York boats pounded, reaching out for the Arctic shore. Over the portage oxen lumbered, the cows would bellow and the drivers they swore. The cows would bellow and the drivers they swore. Still, we can't waste time. We've got less than three months to move a year's supplies to the folks down north. Roll up your sleeves and swing up the load, boys. Got no time for sore backs now. Heave it high and better be quick, boys. The North is waiting for the battered old scow. The North is waiting for the battered old scow. Well, when we get the bell rock below the rapids, we have to reverse the process again. Of course, as the railroad pushes into the North, all this loading and unloading will fade into history, because from here on, it's clear sailing down north. Stretch out now for the mighty Mackenzie, down the slave pull with all your might. Gotta get north with the winter stores, boy. On the way back, the load will be light. On the way back, the load will be light. The deck hands have to be on their toes now because the load gets shifted around a bit. The barges are coupled up and pushed for easy maneuvering on the rivers, but then slacked off and pulled on a long toe across the lakes. That's just a precaution against sudden storms which could sink the whole flat-bottomed lot in one big blow. Stretch out, boys, for the mighty Mackenzie. Cross the slave, the river's in sight. Gotta push hard or winter will catch you. Gotta push hard or you'll freeze up tight. Gotta push hard or you'll freeze up tight. Rapids like these, which make us work so hard, we're thinking might be made to work for us. Turn a little of that energy into hydroelectric power, and we could have more industries like this. We're not claiming that sawmills are a new thing up here. Oh, maybe this one's a little bigger than the others have been. But more than that, we have some modern methods. We steam generate our own power by burning our scrap, and then use the steam over again to keep our mill pond free of ice in wintertime. Good stands of timber cover most of the southwest of the district. We know it's an industry with a future.
All you have to do is stand on the Mackenzie Highway in the town of Hay River, and you know that this is the answer to the isolation of the North, transport. Roads that are open winter and summer, permanent links with the South. <laughs> We're building branch roads from the highway, and as they grow in length, the isolation of the north slowly but surely becomes a thing of the past. Of course, it costs a great deal of money and effort to build all weather highways, and the season is short. But these new roads are leading into a new land, a land as yet discovered only by the few. forward to the day when thousands of tourists will discover these roads and our fishing. We expect it's going to be quite an industry in itself. First town to be served by these new branch roads, Yellowknife, on the north shore of Great Slave Lake, the town that Gold built. Yellowknife began on the rock down here in Old Town. It worked pretty well in the old days when fellas lived a rough, tough life and liked it. But things start to change when you bring a couple of big gold mines like Khan and Giant into steady production. First the wives and children come and they want a department store. The old fur trader's post must change, and it has. Then new houses with running water and sewers. In fact, they want everything up to date. And they have it. But Yellowknife is only a promise of the North to come. We know a town as big as Yellowknife could flourish on the south shore of Great Slave Lake, right here at Pine Point. We have one of the biggest proved lead and zinc deposits in the world. The search for minerals has changed some in recent years. Today's prospectors use airplanes which trail a magnetic device over the likely area. These magnetometer surveys point out likely ore bodies and oil fields. No guesswork here. The slightest variation is recorded on tape and the information later translated into a map. Still, having an indication where minerals might be is not enough. The prospector must get on the ground. He must chip the rock and examine the sample just the way it's been done for years. Mining people are practical, and they have new ways to cut down the effort and time lost in slogging through bush and over rock. Sling up your pack and pick up your hammer. Head for those rocks at the crack of dawn. Mountain this away, barren ground that away. Don't stop now, cause it ain't all gone. Don't stop now, cause it ain't all gone. The barrens take over the tree line, and all of the northeastern section of the district is barren ground. This is the great Canadian shield, and just about any mineral you can name is in it. Norman Wells sits on the east bank of the Mackenzie, a few miles from the Arctic Circle. We've been getting oil here for over 30 years. 
geologists believe these oil fields may run from Edmonton through the Mackenzie Valley clear up to the Arctic Islands. It's just common sense to help the Indian and Eskimo find his place in any new activity in the north. This is their land, and their work is unaffected by severe weather where other men can't operate. This is the new way. Work for wages, work for food and clothes. Steady work, steady wages. It is not trapping. It is not the old way. What do you do when trapping is bad? Sit in the sun, talk about the old days. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow is for the young. Listen to the man, for he speaks of tomorrow's ways. Watch the man as he makes new things with his hands, for many things will be built tomorrow. Listen. Listen and learn. They came from the south and brought new things to the land of the Eskimo. They built high towers that see through the night. We worked with them, and we learned. Winter is always just around the corner in the district. Oh yes, we can move now that we have airplanes, but we really can move a lot of heavy goods. It's too expensive. The cheaper way is once again locked in the ice. But the south is moving north. Along the Mackenzie Highway, trucks move all winter. The railroad comes from Edmonton, and someday it'll move all the way down north. As it does, exploration in the district will grow, and Canada will no longer be looked on as outside by those of us in the Mackenzie. Canada and the world need the raw materials that we've got. They're all here. They're all down north. Let me say, if you ever go north, boys, be sure you go down and never go up. Down that muddy old, mighty old river, down the Mackenzie to try your luck. If you go down, I wish you luck.